Welcome back to the Pulse on the Giant News Channel on Multi TV. And shortly, we will take you back to Parliament to find out what's happening with that graphic journalist who appeared today before the Privileges Committee, plus other stories we have for you here on the program. But let's quickly go live to New York. That's where today Ghanaians in and around New York and the United States of America will be given the opportunity for the first time by the Fordham University to see Joyner's documentary, Left to Rot. The Association of Ghanaian Lawyers in America is partnering the Fordham Law School to premiere this documentary as part of efforts to raise support from prisons across the country. Left to Rot is a sequel to Sir Barting's locked and forgotten documentary, which highlighted especially the plight of remand prisoners in the country and also moved the judiciary to initiate steps to address congestion in the prisons. And Anil Sabuti is in New York and offers us uh, an insight into what's to be expected later today when the premiering is done at the Fordham University. He joins us now via Skype. A uh, very good afternoon to you, uh, old friend. Andy, how are you doing today? Well, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Now, uh, with this program that's coming off this evening at the Fordham University, walk us through what kind of preparations has gone into this and what are Ghanaians there expecting tonight? Well, okay, so um, we already know the expose that uh, sets the documentary date going and the national attention that it, it, it got as well. So, uh, as, as we know, set this on a, on, a, on a study program here yeah, for the university as part of uh, you know, the real story side So, I was using the opportunity to screen this particular documentary, not only to show them or give them an insight into how the prisons conditions are like in Ghana, but also to use the opportunity to raise our funds for uh, certain basic things that, thing that the prisons need, for example. So today at the premiering, I mean, like, uh, like I said earlier in the morning, we're expecting um, uh, people from the academia, especially from Florida University, we have French Ghanaians here who have lived here in the U.S. for, for, for decades, and they, you know, they, are, they were equally moved by sets. Um, uh, projects and they will also want to chip in uh, m money or two. But the key thing is that having set at the event itself, you know, will give them an opportunity for him to explain to them, also give a vivid account or details into, you know, how how really the conditions are in the prisons or some of the things that the, the cameras could not necessarily capture. So as I said, it's more like a, you know, the mission to to help bring some dignity to 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 prisoners. You know, in, in our country, because as all of us know, I, and people have also complained about the fact that our prisons are not informative enough. People go there innocent and they come back more hardened. You know, how can we improve that? How can we improve conditions in terms of uh, provide stopping a place with more, more drugs so when prisoners are sick, they can be attended to appropriately? Uh, how can we give them the water, bottles, and other things? So, um, it so today, for example, I mean, essentially for him to showcase the, the project and also to use that as a platform to ask for money. Yeah. Okay. Now, in all of this, beyond what the Fordham University and, and the lawyers are looking to do with this, what's the kind of interest that people have built up? I'm talking Ghanaians in New York and other individuals who are keen to watch this documentary today. Well, I, think, I can tell you that the interest has been extremely immense. Uh, I remember prior to Seth coming, he, he sent me a flyer, and I, I was in Massachusetts on the bus near speaking to a couple of friends that I made at the Harvard School, and uh, I told them about this, for example. And you know, they, I, just this morning, I got an email from them, and 15 of them from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government you know, are coming. I, I know that uh, there are a group of students also from the Columbia University that the student of international affairs are also coming. Um, the Ghanaians are from the D.C. and Virginia area who are also coming. So, you know, the interest continues to build up because people want to see exactly what the conditions are because this particular documentary, you know, is talk to Ghanaians who might have seen, you know, there's a snapshot of that on YouTube or on Journey's channel, watching it here, and, uh, They've seen it, so you know they now want to see the length of uh, the, the whole the, the whole piece and in, 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 in entirety, but also to have the opportunity to interact with the gentleman who went into the prisons to bring the particular story to be able to hear first hand account from him the exact problems and how much or how they can contribute because you know like certain tell you that kids are being so a dollar two three four five will go a long way 
to add on to what is is, is on the road collecting to to provide some of these uh, basic uh, items for, for these ones the inmates sure and I mean, we'll talk finally about what the plan is here beyond the premium and what will happen after the individuals who make it to uh, the place for this premiering will do after watching the documentary. But uh, let's watch this interview that Sekwame Wating did with the Professor Paolo Gazzilli, the director at the Fordham University Law School, detailing uh, how this program will play out today. We have been working on prisoner rights and prison issues for a long time and I thought that it was particularly fitting for Fordham to be the venue to host this premiere for the long-term relationship that we have with uh, the country. Mm. And what is the essence of this documentary? For which reason we are having it here? Well, I think the documentary has contributed to highlighting the plight of prisoners in the prison system in Ghana. And I think uh, there's nothing like visuals to convey the image of the suffering and the struggle in the Ghanaian prisons. I mean, I can write as many books and articles as I want to, but I don't think they will have as much impact as the documentary that tells the story to everybody that everybody can relate to. So I thought that for me it was very important to showcase this work to get people in the United States that are interested in these issues to learn by looking at what is going on inside the prison. So I thought this was, for me, even more important, frankly, than writing books and articles about what is going on. I think this uh, is uh, what journalism, investigative journalism, is all about, and I'm very happy to support it. Okay. And what uh, category of people are we expecting? I think there will be people from the Ghanaian diaspora that hopefully will be coming and joining us. There will be people interested in prison reforms in the United States as well. And then there will be students. So there will be a diverse group of people that will hopefully benefit from the show. Mm -hmm. And so finally, what should we expect? Well, uh, I think uh, why don't you come and see it and then you see it for yourself. <laughs> So that's for Professor Paolo Galiz, the director of the Fordham University Law School, explaining why this premiering being done at that law school is important today to educate a lot of people about the conditions here in Ghana, in our prisons, and what can be done to improve these conditions. And you are also still with us via Skype live from New York. And he, uh, so I was asking that beyond the rationale here, what's going to happen for those who are interested in any part of America and want to help in making this? Uh, very difficult conditions in Ghana's prisons change. Well, so like I said, I'm starting to a little bit collective and uh, by asking for support. And I can also say that uh, most of what I talk to them about the, the conditions in the prisons, you know, it doesn't really ask them for money, but they themselves are willing to contribute to chip in. So, I mean, currently, as, as it happens, is we're trying to sort of set up satellite um, networks within the state. So, for example, in Washington DC, somebody could be there and could be, you know, um, getting support from 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 through members, organic residents or non Ghanaians who live there. They, mm -hmm. they are very much moved by the documentary and want to give money. And like you said, the Fordham University is a very reputable uh, Ivy League institution around the world, not only in the US here, for example. So, if you're on the platform, you know for sure that you know you can get something. And they are also pushing. And doing everything within their power to help. So, because they believe, for example, that journalism gets results, and this particular project is not only reporting what the issues are, but moving a step forward to, you know, solicit for funds to improve the conditions in there. So, it is they find it extremely important and worthy, and that is why they want to put, you know, their dollar. They want to put their two dollars, their three dollars, their four four dollars, or whatever money they have in this particular project to make the conditions. You know, better in those prisons. So, um, you know, a, a lot of talks are currently ongoing. I, I may not be able to disclose everything, but I can tell you that set is working behind the clock, behind the scenes, especially to get things done. Okay. Now, now, I'm, I'm listening to you and the kind of interest you speak of build, uh, building up in New York on this premiering of the documentary. I'm, mo I'm only imagining, has there been some other approaches to, to have this done more like a rope show in the U.S. for people to see it also? If, uh, so, for example, like on Saturday, like so I was with Saturday whole day, and we just moving around um, the boroughs in New York, and we getting calls from Washington. There are a couple of Ghanaians in, in Ohio, the same to in, um, in, in Texas, Houston, Texas, for example, who wants uh, this particular documentary shown. So, essentially, the key thing that now is that 
the boys in such courts, you know, you need to map up proper studies and plan. So you want to come back to the U.S. maybe a month or two, you're just going to be on the road moving from some of these selected places or where <laughs> invitation has come through to to, to, to to showcase the documentary for them to, you know, see and also see how best they can help. Okay. Thank you, Anya Sabote. And I'm sure that for many who are watching keenly what happens today in New York, we'll get to see what the uh, highlights will be and what the reaction will be, not only in appreciating the work done by Seth and that documentary, but also helping us, a uh, President's Ambassador, to see the conditions that change. But thank you, Annie, for speaking to us this afternoon live from New York. You're most welcome. Okay, Annie. All right, then. So uh, that's for the Prisons uh, Project, uh, the left to documentary that's a come about as we together for them University Law School. It will be premiering tonight. We'll bring an update on what happens and uh, what kind of reactions we get from that work that has been put together by Seth Kwame Boateng. You're still watching uh, The Pulse on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. We'll go for a break and we'll come back. We have just three days to go before the re registration exercise ends in the country. We look at the figures, how many have registered. Just little, not more than 25% have registered in this exercise. We'll bring you an update and get to understand what the EC is doing in this final few days to have the rest, the many who are left unregistered, to have them go through the process. Stay with us.